octopuses live all over the world's oceans. The problem with working in the deep sea is there's only one or two or three ways to get there. And I've been successful enough to use Alvin, one of the few manned research submarines in the world. I got a lot of pillow basalt. My depth is 2620. We're looking for these hundred foot tall white things spewing out gray smoke full of sulfide and heavy metals coated with six foot long giant tube worms and we couldn't find them. Oh, the humanity. Oh, humanity. Finally, in the distance there. I see an octopus out there. Oh, you are so keen of I. All those amp amphipods. Oh, look at the amphipods. Mormon. And there's the octopus. I wonder if it's eating amphipods. We got to this one place with a dozen octopuses feeding in a way that's never been observed on the bottom of the ocean before. And it was so totally unexpected. Once we collected four octopuses from that site, we sampled the amphipod swarm. Those specimens contributed to our knowledge of the biodiversity of the deep sea. When I looked at my nine degree north specimens, they were different. What's really interesting is that this subtle difference in counts is the same thing you see in fishes that develop as embryos in different temperature regimes. It's called Jordan's Rule. It had never before been suggested in anything other than fishes. There have been multiple times during my career where I seem to be intent on moving ahead, you know, damn the port torpedoes, full steam ahead on this course, where there's things that crop up along the side that are every bit as interesting as the direct channel I was, I was going on. The Field Museum, through my work in making these deep sea collections, has increased the availability of these otherwise rare specimens to scientists around the world. And that's pretty cool. <laughs>